Hi, I'm Brad Sarin. I'm superintendent of the Sun Prairie Area School District. I'm joined by Dr. Nick Rykoff and uh, Phil Fry here to uh, explain to you in the community the referendum of 2024, uh, which will be on the ballot November 5th of 2024. I'd like to start by explaining what has changed in our landscape across the Sun Prairie Area School District and why do we have a referendum on the ballot and what would these funds be used for according to the school board's vision and mission. And I'd like to say at the onset, uh, when 2022, when we went to referendum, we just didn't know at that time that the state of Wisconsin was not going to backfill federal funds. We didn't know about inflation. We didn't know that our utilities would increase by over 30% over the next couple of years. We didn't know that our insurance would increase by over 20%. We didn't know that transportation was going to increase over a two-year period over 10%. And that has changed the fiscal landscape in the Sun Prairie Area School District. And so in order to meet some of the vision of our community that we learned about when we did strategic planning and the board's vision for the school district, the board has developed three priorities uh, that align to this referendum. And if you advance the slide, the first priority is about providing educational programming to our students that have a return on the investment of those tax dollars for achievement and opportunities for our students. We'd like to strengthen and be competitive for our staff compensation and benefits. And we also need stabilization. We need operations, operational stabilization from one year to the next. And so that way we are not susceptible to the roller coaster of state funding uh, that results from uh, divisiveness at the, uh, the state level for a biennial budget. And so to uh, give more detail about uh, these areas of programming, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Nick Reichhoff to talk a little bit more about educational programming. All right, thanks. The first uh, segment of the referendum funds would be a $4 million investment in the district's educational programming. This uh, money would be used to really focus on three areas. The first area would be to build on our successes related to students' early learning. Our early childhood and 4K programming in the district has uh, um, reaped a lot of benefits, and so we would want to uh, build on that, that programming and expand it to ensure that more students have access to programs like 4K. In addition, we want to continue offering opportunities for our juniors and seniors to earn industry-based certification and college credit to ensure that they're ready for the next stage after they leave high school. Over the last two years, our, our students have saved over a million dollars in college tuition based on some of these programs, and we'd like to use this $4 million if the referendum is successful to expand that. And then the third section of educational programming uh, we'd like to expand is ensuring that we're meeting the needs of our increasingly diverse student body. And so um, when we look at when we look at that, we can see that um, really that's based off of changes to our enrollment. This year, we're projected to have over 8,600 students, which is the largest enrollment for this district ever. Uh, that comes at the same time that we're seeing record enrollment of students living in poverty, record enrollment of students who are, are multilingual learners, and record enrollment of students who are uh, struggling with housing insecurity and homeless. The second uh, section of the referendum would really strengthen our staff compensation and benefits. We know that our students learn best when we have the best staff. We know we can retain those the best staff when we have uh, competitive pay and benefits. And although we have invested significantly in uh, staff compensation and benefits over the last several years, um, what we've learned is that many other school districts in Dane County also went to referendum and uh, went to referendum for uh, dollar amounts that allowed them to invest significantly in staff compensation and benefits. That's led, uh, as an example, Sun Prairie starting teacher pay to be one of the lowest uh, in our comparables in the county. And so what we want to do with this $7 million, should the referendum be successful, is invest it, uh, some of it immediately into teacher compensation that would raise teacher starting pay to $51,402 for a bachelor's and higher for those with a master's. The remaining $4 million in this section would be held onto 
um, and then used as um, needed to uh, increase staff compensation and benefits in other areas, including our support staff, to ensure that they remain competitive with districts around the county. I'll turn it over to Phil Fry to discuss the next section of the referendum funds. Thanks, Nick. And I'll be going through this pretty quick. As always, if people have questions, just send me an uh, email or a phone call and I'll answer those. So really the $14 million is to stabilize our operating expenses. Um, you'll see in the next few slides that the state of Wisconsin has not kept up with funding. And because of that, our, our budget is facing a 12 to $14 million reduction in the next uh, four, four years. So this slide is just uh, going back to 2010, what the state of Wisconsin has provided for school districts uh, as a per pupil increase versus what inflation has done over those uh, 14 years. So basically uh, at the end, you can see we're down $3,300. That's not just us, that's all school districts in the state of Wisconsin. So if uh, Sun Prairie would have received a increase based on inflation, we'd have $3,300 more to spend times our 84, 8,500 students. That is about a $27 million uh, difference between what we received in inflation. So Playing that out over the next four years, uh, we use budget forecast models to look at our expenses, look at the revenues coming in, especially from the state side. And you can see on the very right hand side, we're facing a deficit in 28, 29 of about $12 million and it only grows after that. So people have asked, what would that 12 to $14 million reduction look like? Uh, we did this uh, purely for illustration. We'd have to go through a detailed process to get to this point. But that $14 million, um, if you look at our overall budget, we have about 1,300 staff members. Uh, to get to that $14 million, we would have to reduce 182 positions in the district. Uh, we'd have to reduce all department budgets, athletics and activities, capital projects, all the school budgets in summer and also our extensive summer school budget we'd have to reduce. Again, this is purely for illustration. We'd have to go through a de detailed process, but we wanted to get the public in an idea of what a $14 million reduction would mean for Sun Prairie School District. So we're not alone in this. Um, many districts, I think across the state, 80 school districts will be going to referendum on November 5th. And in Dane County, you can see the five or six districts that are going to referendum and also on a per pupil basis, what that means for each district. Uh, for example, Madison is going for 100 million and on a per pupil basis, that's just under $4,000 per student. So again, we've really done a good job managing our budget. It's not a Sun Prairie issue. It's a lack of state funding. Um, again, if you have more questions on that, please give me a call. But that $14 million that's part of this referendum would um, basically uh, help districts so we don't have to go to reductions and uh, increase our funding uh, through revenue caps. So when people go to vote, um, this is what they'll see on the ballot just real quickly. It's again, to exceed the revenue limit by the state of Wisconsin for $25 million, it would start in fiscal year 24, 25. Again, as Nick explained that $3 million for teacher compensation would start right away. And then the others for educational programming and to maintain operations would be for the next four years. So um, that's basically what I just said on this slide. You can probably advance it, Nick. So um, going back 10 years ago, you can see the district's mill rate was 1350. Uh, currently we're at 986, so the lowest in the last 10 years. With a successful referendum, our mill rate would tap out or top out at $11.30, which would be still quite a bit below um, the high mill rate of 1350 in the last 10 years. So just to get a little bit more on that specifics of the tax impact, the first year would be 30 cents per thousand, second year 58 cents and 56 cents the third year. After the third year, there'd be no tax increase from the referendum. So on a $300,000 house, the total increase would be $432. Um, and then that once that $432 is in uh, is an increase that wouldn't increase after that for the referendum.
Thanks, Phil. Along with approving this referendum to be on the ballot in November, the board delineated four promises to our community. The first is that the district will not seek additional operational funds during the five-year roll-in of this referendum, which would put us through the 2028-2029 school year. The second is that if the district does not need that revenue to be able to fund and breathe life into our programs, that we will not levy for that that money, that we will not tax to the full levy of taxing authority for the Sun Prairie Area School District if that revenue isn't needed. Third is that the district will not use funds to significantly expand staffing, uh, aside from any enrollment-based staffing. And instead, these funds would be used to support our current staff. And the last is that the district would uh, continue its commitment to improve results for our students, because that's why we are all here. And finally, we just wanna end with gratitude. We have been thankful this entire time to our community for being able to support our kids and our families. And uh, the entire strategic plan is based off of the feedback from our community. And so we know that when the schools are thriving, that it's part of a thriving community and we want to be a part of a thriving community. And so on behalf of the Sun Prairie Area School District, we'd just like to express our gratitude. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact either me, Nick, or Phil. Thank you.